There's 3D printing, electronics, lasers, printmaker corners, and other stuff too. And here's the TH3D Easy Board Lite on a CR10S. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be taking the Easy uh, Board from TH3D. You see here a little bit. Um, and I'm going to be installing it on my CR10S. So before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and open this bag. This board was originally uh, designed for, uh, I think, a Creality Ender 3 which um, has a different board, has a different LCD, and I want to put it on the CR-10S, and the reason for that is, is I'd really like to get the, um, the silent step sticks. So the CR-10S is pretty loud. Uh, this one has TMC 2208 drivers on here, so it's the Easy Board Lite V1. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, you can kind of see the, these little chips here, the stepper step sticks. And these are the silent ones. So there are no heat sinks on there. Um, from what I understand, that's because the PCB is thick enough where, according to the spec from uh, Trinamic, um, it's fine. You just have to blow air on top of it. One of the reasons I decided to go with the Easy Board as opposed to something cheaper like uh, an SKR is because it's a straight drop in. So if you look over here, you see the SD port and the USB port, those are going to fit right in flush in the CR10 or Ender 3, Ender 5 control box. So actually what this is, is it's a um, dual Z. So on the original Creality boards um, for CR10S, you have two ports um, for the motors, but those these connections for the motors are also just running in parallel. So they're, um, they're just soldered together on the board, whereas this, it's only got one um, Z. So then you're just going to plug this in and plug your two motors in here. And this little adapter here is for the LCD screen. So the CR10S has two connector, connectors, whereas this board, designed more for the Ender, has just one. So that's going to allow you to connect your um, LCD. Okay, here is my CR10S. You can see that um, I've got it sitting on my table over here. Uh, and I'm going to use this workspace which is kind of small, but I'm, first thing I'm going to do is take off the box, all the screws on that, and then uh, basically disconnect everything uh, from the old board, and then I'll, I'll reconnect it. Um, the other thing I'll just note is that I've got a little bit of an upgraded setup here. So I've got a Titan Arrow on the, um, on the hot end, <clears throat> and then uh, I've got the TH3D magnetic system on the plate, and I also have these polycarbonate wheels which um, help for wear and tear. So I'll, I'll try to find some links and put those in the video description as well. And after I do the board upgrade, I'm not completely finished because I still need to flash the firmware. And since I do have a little bit different setup, um, it's going to take a few little uh, tweaks to get that uh, firmware running just right. So I could use Marlin, which is what I have on here now. Um, but what I'm going to use is the, the modified Marlin uh, TH3D Unified Firmware. So it's based on Marlin, but the nice thing is, is you get, um, it's a lot easier to set up and configure, and <clears throat> it's also supported by TH3D. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is unscrew your cords. Um, you may have noticed mine look a little different. I've got this textile weave. I did that because of when I did the Titan Arrow upgrade, I had to rewire everything and uh, put that on it instead. And then um, obviously make sure it's unplugged. So this stuff I just kind of keep um, off to the side. You can't really disconnect it completely. So then you flip it over and then you're just going to take all these screws out. So I will fast, I'll take all that out and then I'll fast forward to when I get to the board. Okay, once you get that out, um, all the screws out, you can take your power supply. I usually just set mine on the bed. And then um, now you can see there's basically just the, the board. I'll show that in a second. But you're going to go in here, um, and then you're going to swap the boards. Okay, so here's the board um, from the top-down view. So you can see in here, um, I've already went ahead and labeled. This is probably the tenth time I've been in this thing. so. I find it useful to label all of your cables. Um, it helps making things easier if you end up forgetting the connections. 
So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to um, <clears throat> leave the board in there and then start connecting the new board. And then once I get all the connections swapped, then I will uh, take the old one out. I think that might be a good way to, to try this. So hopefully my cables are long enough. Okay, so I've got the easy board sitting on top there. And you can kind of see how everything pretty much lines up. Um, so you see the old CR10 Creality board down here, the new one up here, and you can see for the most part, so over here like the SD and the USB, those are exactly in the same spot. Um, you see the LCD, there's two connections here, but there's only one here, but that's fine. We're just going to drop in this little adapter that it comes with, and then that'll give us the two connections, and then get all the <clears throat> your power connectors kind of right in here, so that goes... Uh, to your hot end and your heated bed and then on the right here you've got your um, input DCN uh, these boards run both uh, 12 volt and 24 volt so the CR10 is a 12 volt power supply um, so that that won't be an issue at this point I do recommend taking a picture of your board before you begin unplugging too much um, that way if you're not sure or don't remember where something was you can easily refer back to it so one thing I noticed is um, on the reality boards, the way the plugs go in are a little bit different um, than what's on the easy board. So you can see the little, these little pieces here where you, you plug the cord in this way, where those little openings are. Um, and on the reality board, it's on the outside, so not, not a big deal, but just something to be aware of. Um, so then for the Z, as I mentioned earlier, so these are... This is a little breakout for the Z, so that's going to be different as well. So you're going to plug that breakout in and then plug into these two. Okay, so this is what it should look like when you have all of the motor connectors done. So got all those moved over. The next thing I'm going to do is um, plug in the remaining uh, wires here that go to the end stops. And then after that, I'm going to plug in the power cables to these uh, block, the spring terminal blocks here. What I'm also going to do, as you can kind of see in my Creality board, I put little pluses and minuses above on the on the green, so that makes it easier for you to see, because uh, it's really hard to see these you know markings down here on the PCB. Um, so I like to put them up here. That way, it just helps you not make a mistake. But you can see I just kind of label them right there, including this one. Um, it's always good to better be safe than sorry. The other thing I noticed on here while I was doing that is there's a nice fuse right here, so that, that's pretty good. Um, just in case something does happen, uh, you got that fuse as extra protection. As I was going through this, I thought maybe it would be easier to take the Creality board out and pull it up so I can get to it better. And um, So then uh, I'm going to take all these screws out. You can see there's one here, here, um, somewhere over here. There's one. Kind of hard to see. And then there's one here as well. So hopefully you can see that right in there. So those four screws have to come out. I recommend using, just loosening them with your Allen wrench and if you have a magnetic screwdriver or a pair of uh, you know, tweezers or something, you can pull them out pretty easily. I recommend getting one of these um, hex drivers, straight drivers if you can. It makes things a lot easier to get in and out of there instead of using the Allen wrench. Okay, something I went ahead and did is I taped the bottom of that uh, parallel Z board. Um, there were some kind of some soldered ends here, and I, I want to make sure those don't accidentally short out on anything. It's probably not a big deal, but I just did it to be extra safe. Okay, as you can see, it's getting pretty tight in here. I've got, um, but I've got all, everything moved over the X, Y, and Z end stops, uh, the yeah. filament sensor. Make sure you get the polarity right on that. Um, the red, the red wire is the five volt, and then the yellow is the sensing. Um, pretty much everything's plugged in now, uh, except for the power cord. So that's the last piece. I'm going to do that next. All right, so I've run into a little bit of a snag here. So I've <clears throat> I've got a fan connection here. So the Creality board has three fan connections. Um, this one goes to the case fan. These go to the hot end and the part cooling fan, I believe. Um, and then there's another 12 volt uh, spring terminal right here that powers this fan. So the problem is, is the easy board 
Easy Board Lite only has two fan connections. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is just cut this and then splice it into the terminal here. Something else that I've done, uh, I did this a while ago, but I put a, what's called a ferrule. I crimped a ferrule onto the end, so this creates a square end. And this is really what you're supposed to use on spring terminals. Um, and then it just fits in nice and easy. And then you can tighten it down. Um, it's a lot better than using the, the stock connector, which is um, soldered. You're not really supposed to use a soldered connector in a spring terminal because it can deform over time and then cause a short. So using these spring um, or sorry, using these ferrules um, makes it hold together and, and uh, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about it shorting out later. Okay, here you can kind of see I'm finishing up uh, wiring the power. So I just recrimped my ferrules on the heated bed. Um, so those are going to go in the middle of the block. Um, and then you've got the yellow wires uh, that are going to the hot end. And um, what I ended up doing was uh, I had a spare fan and I wasn't sure which connector it was, which is right here. So I did notice um, there's not enough fan pins on the board, but what they've done is they've given you an all, like a, basically a um, power rail here, right here on this um, third block. And that power, power rail is gonna be giving you what you need for your fan. So for the CR-10S, it would be 12 volt. For the enders, it would be 24 volt. I think it's just whatever the voltage is coming in. So um, I did actually find there some directions and it mentioned that in the directions. So that was cool. One other thing I'll mention while I'm uh, showing these connectors for the heated bed for the CR-10S, these are really thin wires. Um, on the ender, it's gonna be thicker. That's because it's just basically sending a signal to this MOSFET right here. So that's what actually is powering the heated bed. So you need a little bit <clears throat> bigger um, MOSFET, although I think this could probably power it sufficiently um, without using the MOSFET, but I'm gonna keep it in there because it's already wired. And as you can see, the bed on the CR-10S is a lot bigger. It's a full 310 or so millimeters. Okay, so now I'm down to wiring the fan, the case fans, which you've got a fan right here, right behind the screen. And then you've also got this fan in the back. Um, they're both 12 volt fans, I believe. And um, what I did was these wires were, I can't remember what I did with them before, but I had them running to the other board. I actually had them running to the heated bed connection, which I thought was kind of funny. I didn't even realize that. Um, this one was running to the board itself. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, there's only two fan plugs on the, um, on the board. So I'm gonna have to, what I'm gonna do is basically splice those together. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna lengthen these wires because I think they're a little too tight, a little too tight in my box. So I'm gonna solder, um, lengthen them a little bit, solder them, and then I'm gonna crimp the two together. Okay, now I've went ahead and extended the wires, soldered them, put some heat shrink on them for both fans, the front fan and the back fan. And now I'm getting ready to crimp a ferrule on, and then I will insert them into this first block here, which is intended to be used for um, accessories. Okay, now I've got everything connected and I am just putting uh, the screws back into the board. Actually, I'm, I disconnected the LCD so I could screw things in a little easier, but that's probably all you need to disconnect. Um, screws went in pretty easy and it looks like it's matching right up. Kind of see on the side, the SD and the USB perfect match. So that's what they mean by a drop-in replacement. You don't have to worry about modifying your case or your board. I'm thinking this is going pretty good here. After we get it all buttoned up, I'm going to upload the firmware and give it a try. Okay, now I'm in the firmware on my Mac using the Atom editor. You can also use VS Code. Um, so all I had to do, I had to uncomment this line. That, that means I removed the two slashes. So CR10 says to use the CR10 one for CR10S. They're both pretty, pretty much similar for the firmware purposes. And then um, I also uncommented this line because I'm using the stock filament sensor. And then these are all already set. I didn't mess with any of that. Um, I did uncomment this because I'm using a Titan extruder and that is the number of steps I'm using, if I, if I remember right. Um, 
see, and I didn't really change anything else, and there's not really a whole lot else to change. So I'm just gonna try and give this a shot. Let's see if it works. What you do is you, you compile this, and then after you're, after you're done compiling it, you then um, just copy the output file, the bin file to the SD card. Okay, my firmware finally completed. Um, I have a really old Mac I'm using. Probably took about 10 minutes, but um, once it completes, you have to hunt around and find the firmware.bin file, which is, um, it's buried. Let me just show you here on the Mac where it's at. So this is where it's at on my machine. So you gotta go in this .pio envs folder, and then um, and then it's just right there. So you can see it there. And then what you're gonna want to do is copy that firmware.bin file onto the SD card, which I have loaded. So I'm doing that next, and then I'm gonna take it over and um, try and power things up. Yeah, I just fired it up again. It looks like maybe I had a loose connection on the LED screen, so something is coming up. Um, looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like it's got the TH3D on there. Okay, so I've been doing a few tests. I've got the hot end heated. Okay, now I've got the case and the power supply back in. I'm going to try and do an auto home, and hopefully this will work. If you get a motion, auto home. Wow. I don't hear anything, which is really good. Uh, hmm. So that's going in the wrong direction, so I'm probably going to have to reverse that motor. Should not be too hard to do. I think I can do it in configuration, but I will power it off just so it doesn't start grinding when it gets all the way to the top. Okay, back to the firmware. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reverse the Z motor, and I also uh, found in the instructions that I should define this dual Z motors so it gives it a little more current. So go ahead and uh, make sure you do that. You may not need to do the reverse Z motor. Um, I'm guessing that was unintended. Okay, I just got the firmware reinstalled and I did an auto home and everything looked good. So now I'm actually going to try my first print with the new board. We're gonna see if it works. Um, okay, that's good. The fan spun up. I did notice that when I auto home, the fan also kicked on, but it was the wrong fan, it was the park fan. So I realized that I had that wire, that, um, the fan wire switch, so I went ahead and switched them, so I think that was my issue before, so now everything is working as I would expect. Alright, so it's heating the bed right now, we're going to take a little bit of time to do that. Okay, so here we go. I just got, uh, looks like the printer's about ready to go. Um, I've got some PET-G on, so I figured this would be a good test. PET-G has to print at a little higher temp, so now it's doing the homing. I can barely hear anything. Um, I would say the hottest thing now, or I'm, I'm sorry, the loudest thing now is probably the uh, hot end fan. So here we go. Um, looks like it's holding its temperature good. I noticed on the Creality, it bounces around a little bit. I'll probably need to run a pin tune. Looks like it dropped a couple degrees. Um, Okay, I'm not really seeing anything extruding, so it's possible that the E motor's reversed. Okay, after some more tweaking with some E step settings, um, I was able to get it printing. It's doing very well. I still need to calibrate that, but at least I've got some uh, print. Uh, looks like it's printing pretty well now, so. All right, looks good. Um, I think for now, I'll take a little bit of a break and call it a day. Okay, here's the TH3 Easy Board Light on a CR10S printing some PLA. Um, I've got, I'm doing a bench right now, and uh, I think I finally got it where I need it. So we'll uh, check back in a little bit. All right, so after a lot of uh, configuration tweaks, everything eventually came together pretty well, and here's the result of my first benchy on the new board. So I think overall things are looking pretty good. I still have some calibration to do, but uh, happy with the product, so I would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching.